testing out a new service. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> I'm going to check on my Facebook before <laughs> I get started. Theoretically, ah, oh, this is cool. Let me make sure I can hear ah. myself. I'm going to check on my Facebook. Ah, oh, this is cool. Yep, it's working. What's up, everybody? I am. Ah. I'm going to check on. I am literally streaming from. Oh, I... Yep, it's working. What's up, everybody? What I, I wonder ah. is if I'm going to be able to see comments here. I'm trying out this new service where clearly I can share my screen. We're doing two truths and a lie. If you're here live, can you please say hello? I want to see if comments pop up on this thing or I have have to, if I have to check um, if I have to be like checking my phone. Uh, I am streaming in the team strength group and on my personal page and we're talking two truths and a lie today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started and see if I can check. It'd be really cool if, 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 if uh, comments popped up on here, but please say hi. If you're watching live, please say replay. If you're watching the replay of this and I'm going to go ahead and get started. So first of all, we have a lot of new people. So I want to make sure that I introduce myself. So I'm Jamie. I am a personal trainer and level one and level two certified nutrition coach. I run strength by Jamie Barroso. We have been in business for about eight years now. As a collective whole, we hold more certifications than I can count in exercise science, nutrition science, sports nutrition, et cetera, um, as, well as, as well as, which honestly, this next thing is more important than anything else, years and years of experience coaching real people just like you, both virtually and in person. So that is what we specialize in. We, we help people learn to lift. We help people learn to love how they feel, how they look. And without restrictive dieting and with the backing of science and sustainability at the forefront of everything that we talk about. So you always know that you are not only giving scientifically backed data, but you are getting it with the lens of sustainability because that is what is the number one thing over here at Strength by Jamie is the ability to sustain your lifestyle because it shouldn't be miserable. I like to say if the methods suck, then your chances of keeping the results are going to suck. <laughs> and I want to help you unsuckify your routine. Okay. So every week we do something called two truths and a lie. We've been doing it really only in the team strength Facebook group, which if you're not a part of yet, you need to get in there because it's awesome. Um, and we post this two truths and a lie. And I give you guys an opportunity to vote on which one you think is the lie. Sometimes it's an easy win. <laughs> Sometimes I am playing around with wording. Sometimes it is up to interpretation. So it's kind of like the lens that I have on this particular topic. Um, and sometimes it is just plain factual. And this is one of those I'd like to say. So we're talking ice baths and cold exposure today. So we're going to get into it a little bit here. So I'm going to go through one, two, and three. I'm going to reveal the answer of which one is the lie. Now, in this particular situation, numbers one and three directly contradict each other. So to be honest, the results of you guys responding was all over the map. I had I had one person say two, which threw me off a little bit. Maybe they were guessing the truth. Some people flip it and they think it's like one truth and two lies and they guess the truth. Um, but most of you were kind of mixed between one and two. So number one, ice baths are great for strength training recovery and have a host of other benefits. Okay, is that true or is that a lie? Number two, how good an ice bath might be for you is very individual, and the benefits can often be achieved through other measures. Is that true? Is that a lie? Number three, ice, ice baths can blunt muscle growth and recovery and therefore are not recommended post-strength training. True or a lie? Okay, the lie is, you ready? The lie is number one. Ice baths are great for strength training recovery and have a host of other benefits. That is not true. In fact, ice baths can actually blunt muscle growth and are not ideal for post training, post strength training. Let's talk about this a little bit. Okay. So first of all, ice baths right now and cold exposure are a big thing right now. Everybody's doing them. And whether it's for recovery or mental benefits or just the idea of doing something hard every day, they are all the rage. Now, I'm going to be honest. Uh, there's a little bias here. I don't like to be cold. <laughs> I do not like the feeling of being cold. It is 72 degrees right now, and it is sweater weather, sweater weather for me. However, um, that's beside the point. 
because there is actual data to back up what I'm about to say. So <laughs> there are a host of benefits to cold exposure. I'm not going to deny that. There are things that are beneficial. And we'll talk about that in a sec. However, when we look at the data post strength training, pretty much immediately post strength training, cold exposure, what it technically does is it kind of restricts your blood vessels. And what this does is actually can possibly, now whether this is placebo or not is kind of yet to be exactly determined, um, but it actually can impair muscle protein synthesis, which is the process of your body actually like breaking down and repairing muscle and utilizing amino acids and protein to do that. So it actually can impair that and blunt that a little bit. So in terms of muscle hypertrophy, which is the actual act of being able to grow muscle, there is a blunting effect when cold exposure happens pretty much like immediately after or very soon after a strength training session. Now, is this a massive difference? No. Is it going to be like, you know, pounds and pounds of muscle added to your frame versus not from cold exposure? No. Uh, if you were to take two, let's say identical twins, and even there is variation there, but if you were to take two identical twins, expose one to cold exposure or ice baths, uh, post, you know, strength training, um, and one not, are you going to see a massive difference? Probably not in the terms in of like the population that we're speaking to here. So most busy, regular people who just want to look good and feel good and be confident, but also like enjoy pizza and donuts and mac and cheese occasionally, is it going to make that big of a difference? No. So is there a slight detriment to muscle growth? Yes. With ice baths. Is it that big of a difference? No. All right. Now, where we do see benefits in recovery with ice baths is post like high endurance training. So when we're looking at more high endurance and again, is the benefit massive? Not really, but we do see a little benefit towards a decreased DOM. So delayed muscle uh, uh, soreness. So muscle soreness being down and then general fatigue. So fatigue that you might feel from like high endurance training, um, the fatigue seems to be greatly lessened. And so people are able to uh, get back in to the race and run longer and faster and harder than maybe they would have if they didn't do ice bath recovery. Okay. Again, it's slight, um, but it is there and it is seen. Now, where there are definite benefits to ice baths or cold exposure in general are the mental benefits. So two in particular, one of them is just the idea of doing something very hard every day. So for somebody like me who absolutely hates the cold and getting in ice baths or a very cold shower is literal torture, the idea of doing something extremely hard that you don't want to do every single day is very valid. Now, can you get the same, um, and I'm not looking at comments, so I will. I'll go back and look at comments for anything you guys have. Um, can you get that same benefit from doing something else really, really hard? Sure. I also hate very high intensity interval training cardio, like 15 minutes of high intensity training. So if I were to do that every day, I would get similar benefits and cold exposure. The other thing that cold exposure has significant, um, proven benefits for is like anxiety and, uh, anxiety. I'll leave it there is the general idea of being able to force. So I saw a study recently where it showed what happens to people's kind of anxiety levels when you expose them to cold right away. Zoop, they go skyrocket, right? Um, that's normal. You get into this high extreme environment and <laughs> heavy breathing and it's very cold and those kind of markers go up. But what happens after one to two minutes of that exposure? They drop significantly to pre like cold exposure levels, like below pre uh, cold exposure levels. So what happens if anybody who's been at cold exposure, have gotten into an ice bath, you'll notice as soon as you do it, <laughs> it's kind of this rapid breathing and this high stress response. That's sort of what I'm looking for, a stress response. But as you sit there and get used to it, your breathing starts to slow, starts to get regulated. And eventually you start to have um, a very deep breathing, a very controlled breathing. And the stress response is greatly, uh, greatly uh, improved. Okay. Greatly improved stress response. And these benefits last post cold exposure. So after getting out of the ice bath, after getting out of the cold shower, you have an impaired ability to handle stress markers in life. So that is definitely true. And you'll see some people say that like dipping your face in a, in a bowl of ice water can have the same benefit. 
Not really. And that's because you don't get the breathing benefits. If your face is in ice water, you're not able to regulate your breathing. And so you're not getting that same benefit. It can provide the shock that you need to come out of. So I like to use it for <laughs> literally, um, I like to use it for if I'm like feeling very high anxiety or high stress with my kids, and I can sense that I'm about to blow <laughs> you know what I mean? If your parents um, dunking my face in ice water or putting like some ice cubes literally on my eyeballs or something, it's enough of a shock in temperature that it causes you to have that kind of space in between. So it can help there, but it doesn't have the same benefits as like dunking your entire body in and having that be, being forced to kind of regulate your stress response. Um, but when it comes to recovery post strength training, it doesn't really do much. If anything, it has a negative impact. However, like, so number two is very true. How good an ice bath might be for you is very individual. You might really benefit from that uh, stress uh, response benefits of cold exposure. You might benefit from um, the delayed, you know, onset muscle soreness. If that, if you notice that that helps you and if it helps you or not, again, you know, if there's a placebo effect is very kind of up in the air, but you might benefit from it in that in general. And in terms of like recovery, there are lots of other things that you can do to make sure that you are recovering properly. So heat exposure post strength training is something that can definitely help with recovery. It opens up blood vessels. It helps things get moving. Sitting in a hot bath, sitting in a sauna um, is definitely something. Getting enough sleep, getting enough food, getting enough mobility and exercise. These are all things that help with recovery. Foam rolling, um, stretching, walking in general helps with strength training recovery. So are there are lots of other things you can do to help with recovery. Um, and there's also other things you can do to help with stress response that you don't necessarily need to dump yourself in ice water. So the point of this is if you enjoy doing it, I know that there is somebody in this community that loves her ice dunking by all means do it. It definitely has benefits on an individual basis. But if you are somebody like me who is looking at these Instagram posts of people either jumping into a, a freezing cold shower, which I've done. And I did notice the breathing and the stress response. Like I felt good afterwards. Did I feel good enough to do it repeatedly? Uh, no, <laughs> every once in a while, maybe if I'm having an extreme kind of day or I'm in my feels in those ways, I might utilize it. Um, but am I going to go buy one of those $3,000 ice bath things to keep in my backyard so I can dunk in it post recovery for recovery? No, absolutely not. And you don't need to feel like you have to. Okay. It's a big thing right now. Not hugely merited, very slightly merited, um, in certain respects, but not hugely. So I hope that that helps you. I'm going to go look and see if we have any comments because I'm not seeing them here. And I'm sure that I will find another way to see comments on these as well at some point. Um, as always, before I get into comments or questions, if you guys have any, please let me know. Um, I can I can talk about those. Uh, as always, if you want help taking the guesswork out of your fitness and nutrition routine, um, shoot me a DM. We can talk about how that would look like for you. And Stephanie, hi, I'm late. Which one was the lie? The lie is number three. I mean, number one, <laughs> the lie is number one, that ice baths are great for strength training recovery. That is the lie. What's up, Erica, Jennifer, Sarah, Cassandra, Christy. Hi, Aaron. I love your yellow heart. Awesome. Good to see you guys. Do you guys have any questions about this topic or any topic in particular. Oh, also I posted, uh, I'll see you tomorrow because I posted a question to both of my pages asking basically, what are you struggling with in terms of nutrition, fitness, um, this lifestyle in general, maintaining your results. So what is it? Uh, I'm going to come live. I have a goal of being live every day for like two solid weeks, not weekends, um, to talk to you guys about these things and help you solve these problems. So I have a bunch of things already got a bunch of topics I want to talk about. But if you have anything in particular you want to talk about, or you want guidance on outside of a two truths and a lie, um, I'm more than happy to create some lives around those topics. I will come on at random times. It will not be, but just keep, keep an eye on your notifications and, uh, we can talk about these things. All right. Let me see. Hi, what's up, Ariel, Laurie? Cool. All right, if you guys don't have any questions, I'll check my team strength group one more time. There's got to be a way to see these more clearly. I'll figure it out. Um, if you guys don't have any more questions, I will let y'all go. I'm trying to check one more time on the team strength group, and I'm not seeing them. All right, I'll check them later. <laughs> I'll check them later. <laughs> oh, there we go. Ooh, there we go. How can ice bath stunt muscle growth? If you already answered that in the beginning, I'll watch the replay. Yes. Watch the replay, Stephanie, because I answered that. 
Um, I mean, I didn't go deep into it. Essentially, it's the idea of constricting and you're not allowing the blood flow. And again, it's a very small effect, but it is there. All right, guys, peace out. Happy Wednesday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And I will see y'all tomorrow with another fun nutrition and fitness and or fitness topic. Bye.